السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أبولوجايز فور وات هابند إت إز إنترنت كونكشن واز نوت فيري جود بس كومينج باك تو ستارت أجين توداي يو هاف تشوزن ذيس تايتل بيكوز إتس فيري إمبورتنت أند ديسكشن هابند بيتوين مي أند ماي فريند عبد العزيز تازسونيز فريند إن تركي إن إسطنبول أباوت ذا جود جفرنانس لاك أوف جود جفرنانس فور مي is one of the causes of conflict in any society. This conflict could be on the level of the family, as individuals, the father or the mother, who are treating their children differently, could be in an organization, could be in a society, could be on the level of the avenue, the street, the town, the city, the country, and so on. So good, government, good governance is a key player in the success of development or the successful development of any society. So why I chosen the, the title, we are not poor? Why we are not poor? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created human being, when he created all the creations of God, lands, Seas, ocean, trees, climate, animals, birds, insects, etc., etc. He made every piece of land to be very resourceful to sustain the individuals, whether they are animals, birds, any creatures, and human being living on such a land. But it is up to the human being, which is the leader of the humanity, to be able to discover the resources, the natural resources or the national resources, and utilize them and manage them well. So don't ever come and tell me your country is poor. I tell you, your management is bad. You don't have a good governance. You don't have a standard to manage your resources, that's why you might be a very rich country, but very poor people. Because of what? Because of the bad governance in such a country. And this was happening globally, which leads to conflict. This tree I draw, I'm just trying to learn drawing now, to show the tree does not have leaves or fruits. This is the country that we are actually we are living in nowadays. And the land, the green, the, the yellow one at the bottom is the deserted or poor land which has been badly managed by the current government in your country to make your country actually as poor as this tree with no fruits, nothing. And despite the fact when you look at the greenery or the green color there, which is a big area, a lot of resources have not been utilized by the current government which is managing your country. That's what it leads to conflict. Lack of good governance means conflict or creates conflict. Before we ask any, any one of our governments and any one of our uh, responsible people, in the society, we have to realize who are we before we start asking. We could be citizens, as it's written here, or civil society organization, or private sector, or civil servants, or government institution, or state institution, judiciary, legislator, legal institution, parliamentary institution, and so on, so on, so on. So every one of these has a God-given right to ask any one in authority. Whether this one in authority become the prime minister, the president, the king, the queen, the prince, the chairman, the director, the CEO, whatever you call it. It is not something being given to me as a token of appreciation from anybody. It's my own right and my absolute right to ask question, to ask for clarity, to ask for, uh, to be, to make the, the, the government or the governing body 
in the organization or in the institution or in the society or in the country or in the government accountable to me as well as to this institution. First of all, as I said, we have to, if we look at good governance, we have to realize who are we first. After that, we have to look at, we have to map our resources in the country. I have my country, it goes from, the, from west to east, north to south, and this is boundary. I have to discover my resource. My resource will be divided into two. National resources, which could be natural resources, as well as state resources created by the state. The most important in the national resources are three. The first three for me, which is the human resources, the household and community assets, and the social cohesion. For me, these first three are the most important assets or resources in any country. For me, it could constitute up, could constitute up to 60 to 70 percent of the national assets or the national resources. Why? Because if we don't believe in human being and the social cohesion itself, we don't have a country. We don't have future. We don't have leadership. We don't have organization. So we cannot invest in the rest to develop the rest of the national resources. So the most important for me in these 14 or 15 points in front of you here are human resources, household and community assets, social cohesion. Then we can talk about the geographical location, the climate, the minerals, the oil and gas, agriculture and livestock, seaside resources, water and river resources, tropical, tropical resources, arche, uh, arche, uh, archaeological landmarks, and so on, culture and moral values, and, and, and. All these national or natural resources that we have will be based in the development on the first three which is human resources, social cohesion, and household and community assets. These are actually the national resources. Okay. Government or the state provide us with more resources. See, the divide between both of them. Such as safety and security, economic growth and transformation, service sectors, uh, which is education, health, water, sanitation, political and democratic climate, uh, legislation, legal, freedom of democracy, state status of foreign policy, structure and dependent state, institution, uh, uh, legislation, judiciary, laws, economic situation, and so on. All these are provided by the state. So we need to look at the resources we have. The national stroke natural resources that we have, which is the most important amongst it, is human resources. The other one, what is the current government providing us with? Safety, security, and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. Which is written here, which is actually to enable people to look at how can they manage, govern the resources, and govern their country uh, as well. I remember hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu to say, as I said earlier on, if, if some of you came late, no piece of land is a poor piece of land. Because Allah gave the resources and he knew in his knowledge that one million people be living on this piece of land or ten million people. And the resources in such a piece of land is sufficient and abundant for every and each one of those individual human being as well as the creatures living with them. But we, because of bad management and bad governance, we make our country poor and our nation poor. So I said, I keep saying that we are not poor and I believe in it. Whether you like it or not, I believe in it totally. We are not poor. It's we have bad management of our resources. If we look at the, if we have, if, if we become a poor country, as people claim that we are poor, we don't have resources, it's fake, fake. Don't trust such people saying that. Don't ever, don't ever be deceived by such an individual who come and cry on you and said, we are poor. No, you are not poor. You are extremely rich. But you don't know the wealth of the land you are living on. If we look at the solution, it's also either solution or problem. 
our program of solution for the good governance to manage our resources and to make our countries very well developed is these four principles which make the climate the climate these four principles which call them monitoring evaluation accountability and learning this is like a climate which allow the trees to grow which allow the, the economy to grow which allow the freedom the space of to freedom and civil liberty to grow without them as a climate you don't have a good governance that we are talking about this is the climate which i mentioned before we have to believe in these four principles then after that if we want to make a program to reach the good governance and this this four principles will be like actually the gate for good governance these four principles will become the gate of good governance but to reach good governance there is a syllabus or curriculum or steps 27 steps that i put in the coming uh, 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 slide you need to look at this this is the pyramid i've got 27 steps and he should be surrounded by the climate accountability learning monitoring and evaluation okay what are the 27 steps first of all we have to have a policy platform but we have to empower such a policy platform we have to make it resourceful independent and give us the guidance what is the point of having a policy platform without budget without being empowered without being independent without having policies to talk about second is the guy you see we look at all this policy platform go to guidelines strategic management information all this has to be provided to reach the good governance performance standard benchmarking national indicators and executive reports reporting performance measuring performance uh, and uh, uh, introducing the culture of learning culture of learning in the organization each one keep learning from birth to death and teaching and learning uh, improving the compliance um, compliance compliance do we have compliance in our organization no but we we'll talk about it okay uh, improve compliance enhance effective capacity of organization enhancing quality of policy making independent judiciary enhancing uh, the rule of law enhancing uh, improving the regulatory and regulators uh, increasing political stability improving civil liberty learning practice management management our decision we take a decision we have to manage the, the risk of the decision that we take or the success of the decisions that we take accountability transparency public uh, develop public services empowerment empowerment of whom empowerment of individuals empowerment of an institution empowerment of organizations okay not just talking about empowerment greater development effectiveness control of that's called will lead to control of corruption and the top and the peak of it will be the ownership ownership of whom ownership of the citizen to the country each one of our citizens has a share to own of his country okay go back to the 27 points policy platform okay guidelines strategic management information performance standard benchmarking national indicators and executive reports reporting uh, uh, performance measuring performance introducing culture of learning improve compliance enhance effective capacity of organizations enhancing quality of policy making independent judiciary enhancing the rule of law improving the regulatory and regulators increasing political stability improving civil liberty learning practice management decisions accountability transparency develop public services empowerment greater development effectiveness control corruption and ownership this will lead to uh, this is the this is actually the, the, the pyramid of at the top at the bottom here the first one which is 
policy platform. The top one, it's here, which is ownership of the individual citizen to his country or his society. What's my share in my country? Do I belong to my country or not? If I don't go through these 27 points or steps, if I don't make the climate around building the good governance made out of monitoring, evaluation, learning, accountability and learning, I, I cannot claim that we have good governance in our country. And that's what we see nowadays. Very rich countries have got a lot of resources coming from minerals or oil or gas or whatever they call them. They give a lot of money to their citizens to keep them quiet. To make them politically impotent. Because if they start to shout, they lose actually uh, the facilities that they are having from the country. These such countries are not really investing in the human resources. As we said, the most important asset of the country, huh, before we talk about anything, is the human resources, which is here, the first one. Then the social cohesion and household and community assets. These are the first and most important, more important than oil, more important than gas, more important was that anything, if we do not invest in this and just keep them quiet by the amount of money that we give them as salary and facilities, we have citizens who are actually not a corrupt citizen. Corruption is not in theft. Corruption is in the education system of such a country, which let the country to be run by people who do not know their front from their back, going right or left or center or top or down. So mean, which is monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning, and this good governance will be one of the protectors against conflict, whether on a family base or on the national base or otherwise. So if we don't have this 27 in the system of our uh, building, the good governance, we do not have good governance in our country. Don't be fooled by some certificates being taken by uh, organizations or an institution because they brought a consultant or a company asking them to give us a certificate. I mentioned this yesterday in Arabic. Some of them said, said we have uh, uh, the ISO. Said, so what? So what? You have ISO or not ISO, so what? You pay money for it. They give you something to fix it. But ISO is not 27 points. ISO is some criteria which you can take it against to what you have in the organization. But do you apply the ISO criteria or you have only the documents on, on the shelf of ISO? This is a long-term solution for good governance. The 27 points in, in the climate of uh, accountability, learning, monitoring, and evaluation. But if we want to bring this solution on the individual level, we have to look at two things. As the Prophet ﷺ said before, I mentioned this before, if you sleep safe in your dwelling, whatever the dwelling is, if you sleep healthy as well, which is the responsibility of the government, safety and health. The third one is the responsibility not only of the government, but of yourself. This daily sustainable income for you. Three things. Safety, health, and daily income. As if he has owned the whole world. Our individual, individual based solution will be based on education. If we find that our government does not have a good education system, does not have a good syllabus, whether doing it intentionally or unintentionally, does not educate our children. There's many alternative ways for education that we can find 
to protect the future generation to come. One of the well, first one is uh, home education. In the West here, some of the families teach the children at home. We we'll call it home education. And this is a part of the state education. Whether Muslims or non-Muslims are doing it, it's, 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 it becomes a fact. Okay? So you can add some subject to your children in history and others to uh, uh, it is his or her curriculum. Number two in education is vocational education. Why every girl would love to marry a doctor or an engineer or an officer in the army? What's wrong with a mechanic? What's wrong with a plumber? What's wrong with uh, somebody who is a painter, decorator? What's wrong with this? Why would we do not respect such profession in our society? The third kind of education is skills education. My son or, or my daughter is very skillful in one subject or two subjects, like arithmetic, mathematics, geography, history, art, poetry, painting, music, sports, football, volleyball, basketball, table tennis. Why don't we improve the skills of our children and instead of letting them to learn 20 subjects which they sometimes detest and hate uh, 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 learning them and we focus on what they can do the good thing about Al-Azhar which is a lot of uh, government now don't like Al-Azhar as an institution without mentioning the name of such governments was the freedom of the, 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 the freedom of the student to study the subject he wants at the time he wants from the teacher he wants it's the good old days that's why you go at the time of Fajr or Dhuhr or Asr or Sas sunrise, midday, late afternoon and evening and choose the professor that you, you want to learn from freedom Freedom, freedom to choose the subject, the time, and the teacher. Now we have a syllabus to let you, to send your son or daughter to a box room from a teacher that most of the children might not like because he or she is not qualified. So the standard of education will be going downhill. So we talk about skills of education, we talk about vocational education, we talk about home education. The last one is civil society education. We have to consider the role of the civil society organization in helping the government institution in the education system. But coming back, a non-educated nation, an ignorant nation, a literate nation is very easily conquered by any force, any evil force, whether it's ideological force, military force, theological force, or whatever you call it. Terrorist group, radical group, or others. Because they are not educated, because they do not understand, because they do not realize, because they are not aware, because they are not loyal to the country. So educational system is extremely important and an educated man or woman. Strength is more than the strength of a soldier or an officer, police officer or a soldier who is carrying gun in his hand. The power of education is more than the power of the gun and the missile and the, uh, 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 what do you call it, the jets, which are actually throwing bombs on us. This education. The second alternative is actually the economy. I said, the short term start on individual basis. Alternative education, then home economy. 
Why should I wait for a government to provide me with a job? Why? Don't I have a health, a knowledge, an age, and the ability? Yes. Build your economy from home. Work from home. The mothers who are sitting at home, the qualified individual from university or any uh, college who are still waiting for a government job, they will never get the government job. Do something. Produce something and send it to a local market. So we need to build a local market. The grassroots market. Local markets in the area to enable every individual in the, in, 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 the, in the family to be productive. We realize this. I was mentioning this story to some of our friends 50, 60 years ago. Even 20 years ago. 50, 60 years ago was actually the, a project called the Penny Project. Penny Project. Which actually buy a shoes for a pound. Then you install the pound on three months. Maybe one pound a day to pay your debts or clear your, clear your debts. Okay? This was started in the 50s. Okay? Second project, some of my close neighbors or my close friends or others when I was in Egypt and other countries, they used to cook the meals for some well-off people to learn. See, a mother sitting at home. So to uh, paint something for, 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 for another family, to do the sewing at home, and either to give from family to family or from family to local market. So don't rely on the government job. Make your own job. Because you are able, you as a woman or a man, retired or non-retired, to make this actually product and sell it there. We talked here about household community assets, and as I mentioned it, individual and family manual productivity, of course, and from shelter, the, the title for us, from shelter to customer and local market. So why should I wait? So coming back to organize, to uh, conclude, first of all, we are not poor. Never, 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 never tell any politician or anybody on the media telling you are a poor, tell him you are a liar. You are a liar. You are a liar three times. Who are we? We know that. Then what are our sources? What our national natural resources? The most important is human resources, social cohesion, and household and community assets. Okay? More important than gas and oil, which quite often its resources is not very well managed by the ruling uh, 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 clubs or elites. Then the state resources, which we mentioned it before. Then the pyramid of good governance it starts from policy platform to empowerment of the individual and ownership of the individual, surrounded by the four principles, which is monitoring, evaluation, accountability, and learning. Without this climate, see the climate is like the key for the door of the good governance. Lack of good governance means conflict, or one of the main reasons of conflict. And I mentioned 27 points here of which can go build the good governance system in your organization, in your country. And this here, this is the climate surrounding the pyramid of building the good governance. Then on the individual uh, 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 basis, we should look at alternative education as well as alternative grassroots economy to build. Thank you very much for being patient for uh, what the hassle of the Wi-Fi and the internet in, in the place. And uh, God bless you. May Allah bless you. And I see you inshallah next week. And if you've got any comment or any questions, please let me know. And actually, I'm still learning from you. And at the end, again, we keep thanking uh, Brother Abdul Aziz in Istanbul, who is a Sudanese brother from Darfur, who actually inspired me to prepare this uh, talk.
السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ